In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the gospel that we just heard, of course, is about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Immediately after his baptism, he's driven into the wilderness where he's tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And so it's common on the first Sunday of Lent to hear sermons about resisting temptation and how during Lent we take on these disciplines and to be good people we need to say no to all these things. And I don't think that's especially helpful. So I'm going to go in a slightly different direction today. And, well, I'm going to go slightly off script too. It makes Rob nervous when I ignore my notes. And he's like, what's he going to say? So, I, you know, I go to this Bible study on Mondays with a bunch of the other clergy in Bay Village and Westlake. And one of the gifts of that group is that folks bring their own perspectives from whatever tradition they've come from. And we all read scripture through a particular lens. And sometimes we poke fun at each other for sort of denominational stereotypes. But, I mean, it's a, it's a good group. And, and so my Roman Catholic colleague, of course, is going to look at the scripture from a specific perspective. And my Lutheran colleagues are going to read the scripture from a particular perspective. And, of course, I read scripture like an Anglican, like an Episcopalian. And I think one of the things that our tradition does particularly well, or maybe one of the gifts of our tradition to the, the broader Christian community, is that I think we tend to look at the texts through the lens of the incarnation. That everything else we read in scripture is, is examined through the lens of the incarnation. God taking on human flesh. God coming to be with us. There are other traditions that will read everything through the lens of the cross, and that, that, that is the foundational moment, then they will read the incarnation through the lens of the cross, where I think we do the opposite. We look at the cross and the crucifixion through the lens of the incarnation. So I'm way off on a tangent. But when I... Thank you. When I read the text on Monday with this group of clergy, the first thing I saw was the incarnation. God, Jesus, being sent off into the wilderness to be tempted... Tempted in every way as we are. God, in God's humanity, Jesus being both fully human and fully divine, Jesus in his humanity being tempted, this deeply incarnational act in the fullness of his humanity being tempted, but then in the fullness of his divinity, resisting temptation in ways that you or I never could. Back to script. So today, I'm I'm going to talk about the wilderness and being in the wilderness, because I think that is something that we can all relate to in our own lives. I suspect that we've all spent some time in the wilderness, whether it was a medical diagnosis or whether it was falling out with family or maybe the breakup of a marriage or another relationship, maybe a failure at work and you don't know what the next step's going to be. I suspect that we've all spent a little bit of time in the wilderness. And being in the wilderness is a theme throughout much of the scriptures. Today's Genesis reading comes right after the 40 days and 40 nights of of rain with Noah and the ark. And if that's not a wilderness experience, I don't know what is. The Israelites, of course, after being freed from slavery in Egypt, wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years before entering into the promised land. The Israelites also spent what some think what may have been 40, maybe even 50 years in exile in Babylon, in slavery in Babylon. And then in today's gospel, Jesus is driven into the wilderness and tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And here we are in the season of Lent, 40 days and 40 nights in our own wilderness until our Easter celebration. So one of the things that I love about Scripture is that it really addresses the human condition And so I think scripture is often just as relevant today as it was when it was first written, because we've not evolved all that much. Human beings are kind of the same as we've always been. And so there are a lot of lessons to be learned from these wilderness experiences that are completely applicable to our own lives. I'm going off script again, I'm sorry. And so Leanne just recently has started trying to take my sermons out of the uh, broader live stream and clip them and put them on YouTube. And so she's been asking me for sermon titles, which I've never done before. I've never titled sermons. Um, But this one, now I'm starting to do that. So this one is called Lessons from the Wilderness because I've identified five lessons that I think we can learn from these wilderness experiences. And of course there's more than that, but here's five. 
Number one is that wilderness experiences happen. That's absolutely a part of life. It doesn't mean that God isn't real. It doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. God's people have spent a lot of time wandering through the wilderness, both collectively and individually throughout the scriptures. So wilderness experiences are going to happen. Lesson number two, I think, is that wilderness experiences don't last forever. After 40 days on Noah's Ark where it rained, the rain subsided, the Flood waters withdrew, the, the sun broke through the clouds, and God put rainbows in the sky. The Israelites wandered around the desert for 40 years, but they eventually went into the promised land. And after 40 days in our liturgical wilderness of Lent, we will sing hallelujahs and celebrate Easter. And so if you currently find yourself in a wilderness period in life, one way or another, it will end. It, it, it never goes on forever. Number three is if we think God is supposed to just make us happy all the time, then we have probably not read the scriptures. And this is unfortunately a fairly common view. It's also sort of a a third grade view of God that God is a benevolent Santa Claus in the sky whose job is to keep us happy at all times. And when that is true, when things are going well and we are hashtag blessed, you know, we we can assume that God has done these things for us. But when things aren't going as well, it's easy for folks to think that God has abandoned us and to walk away. But we don't expect this in any other relationship in our life. We don't assume that our our spouse is going to make us happy 100% of the time, or none of us would be married. We don't assume that our children will make us happy and do everything we ask them to do 100% of the time. That's just not reality. That's not what relationships are. And that's not what our relationship with God is either. So that was number three. Yes, three. Number four is that periods in the wilderness remind us how dependent we are on God. Remind us how dependent we are on God. When life is humming along, when things are going well, when we're getting promotions at work, and when we are... Uh, just uh, everything's going according to plan, the kids are getting straight A's, life is good, it's easy to convince ourselves that we've got this under control, that we've got life handled. These are the lies we tell ourselves, but periods in the wilderness remind us how dependent we are on God for absolutely every aspect of our lives. Because when we hit a wall, or we come up against some intractable problem we realize that we can't fix this on our own. And then number five, and what is, I think, the most important one of these lessons from the wilderness, is that even when we are in the wilderness, God is with us. God is with us. The continuation of this incarnational idea, the incarnation that we celebrated at Christmas, God taking on human flesh and being with us. Because God didn't just come to be human in a a superficial way, but took on the fullness of our humanity, which includes time in the wilderness, which includes temptation, which includes suffering, and even to the point of death on a cross. And one of the things that I regularly tell people who are going through a tough time, and you've probably heard me say it before, is that Jesus never promised us that life was going to be easy. What he promised is that he would be with us. He said he would be with us always, even to the end of the age. I think that's the most important lesson from the wilderness, that we are never in this alone. Even in the greatest trial, even in the deepest or darkest of pits that we find ourselves, that through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus, God is with us. So I hope that as we journey through these 40 days of Lent, that you will remember these five lessons. I hope that as you journey through whatever wilderness experience you might have in your own life, that you'll remember these lessons from Scripture. That wilderness experiences happen, that they don't last forever. That our relationship with God isn't just about making us superficially happy. That periods spent in the wilderness remind us how dependent we are on God. And number five, the biggie, is that no matter how bad things get, God has been there, 
And God is there with us. Amen.